Hello, uh, welcome once again on my scientific channel discoversocialsciences.com This video is uh, my third video, a third educational video in the path of political systems. Um, in my last video, the number two, the political systems hashtag two, uh, I gave you like a glimpse of what are the forms of political power or how does political power manifest itself. Uh, in this video, I am going pretty much to continue. I am going to give you a more formal classification, a more formal distinction as for the forms of political power. The central question that we are diving into is if we take any given country, if we take any given political system, and if we point at a randomly chosen person in that system and a randomly chosen, I don't know, minister, president, whoever, how can we know that this person has political power or political powers? because one person or one actor in the political system can hold various types of power or various powers in the same time. Essentially, politics are very largely a game about uh, accumulating as many different powers in one person's hands as possible. That's, that's the name of the game, very largely. So. Before uh, I go further, so before I switch to the PowerPoint presentation, which I prepared for this video, uh, a general remark, as it is an educational material and as it is, uh, well, as it is supposed to work as part of teaching uh, at the university, at my home university, so, and the Andrzej Fritz Modrzewski uh, University of Kraków in Poland. A general principle. Whatever you see in that video or whatever you hear in that video, please adopt a, a scientific and critical attitude. So look for readings, look for sources. In, if in this video, in this presentation, you see or, li or hear a term, a concept that you don't understand, or if you hear me formulating a claim which you either vigorously or just intuitively don't agree with. Just Google up, do research, find sources, try to, to like build your own intellectual position. Now we go into the substance matter of this video, so into the forms of political power. So I tuck gently myself into the corner of that video window and I go to the uh, to the PowerPoint presentation. As a background for uh, the title slide of that presentation, I chose uh, the British Parliament, essentially a parliament. Why? Because if you have a parliament, like a group of elected people, elected officials who are supposed to represent voters, you would intuitively assume that if each of them has one vote, in the parliament, each of them has the same amount of political power. This is, and if you assumed that, it would be wrong. If you take such a parliament and you see those people, you can safely assume that given all the connections they have, all the various types of leverage they have on other people, each of them actually disposes of a different amount of political power. It is very largely about soft power, about soft connections, rather than just about the voting power they have in the parliament. For example, their actual political power very largely depends on the position that they have inside their political party. This is why essentially elected officials who are members of a party are usually more powerful than the so-called in independents or independent elected officials 
who can claim they are out outside the system, but being outside the system means that you are simply less leverage on the system. Okay, so let's go with it. I will magnify that slightly. Does it fit nicely in the window? Yes, it seems that yes. So first of all, I give you uh, a first glimpse of what we are going to talk about. So the first column of the table uh, presents you something which I call a specific substance of power. Substance of power uh, means uh, the type of actual leverage that you have on other people. So the type of actual influence that you can have on what other people do. You can safely assume that power in social terms means that you can influence somehow uh, the behavior of other people. And it can be all the way from a very subtle, soft influence through suggestion, more than forcing their hand, all the way up to the use of coercive force. Uh, and this is like a, a pre, uh, it is, and this is a pretty much continuous scale of power. Now, on that scale of power, you have different uh, like substances of power, and in this table, I name four of them, like four big benchmarks or, or four big reference points that you can take in your own research as for political systems. So first of all, uh, political power can manifest itself as the creation or modification of the institutional order. So you can have the power to, uh, to like make or modify the rules of the game. Secondly, it is the appointment to political roles. And uh, this is important, this is uh, enormously important. In this presentation, I discuss one case, the case of Belarus and uh, of the apparently lifelong president of Belarus, namely Alexander Lukashenko. His power is mostly based on a very clever use of this specific substance of power, on a, on a very clever use of appointment to political roles. This is what he does in order to build for himself that uh, apparently immovable position in the political system. Thirdly, you have allocation of capital as a substance of power. It is a plain claim that any government needs money to function and needs money to have actual influence upon people. Uh, there is a classic in the field of economic sciences, a French political thinker whose name was Jean-Baptiste Say in 1830, so in the beginning of the 19th century, he published a, a treaty, a tre the Treatise of Political Economy, and there he wrote that a king or a prince wins uh, wars with borrowing capacity and not with gunpowder. So really, political power needs money in order to be real power. So the power to allocate capital, uh, so to essentially to give money to different people in the system, it is a huge power, it is a huge substance of power. And finally, use of coercive force. Now, as for the use of coercive force, now I will switch to another slide just to give you a better view of those substances of power. Use of coercive force, I have it here. Hmm? This is a strange power uh, because uh, essentially in, the pol in political systems, uh, the use of force is the most efficient when you don't use it. So when you just can threaten someone with using coercive force, you can have a lot of leverage on them. As long as they believe that they can use force against them, you are like really in charge. But starting from the moment uh, where they decide to say, check, 
when they say show your cards and they and when they actually make you use your force it is already a loss of power for you if you are a political leader or a person in charge so summing up Political power is the power to make important things happen at the scale of entire countries or constituencies. In politics, we measure importance with impact on people's lives and interests. And real impact comes from those four. Creation or modification of the institutional order, which means that rules matter and the power to make them gives true leverage on other people. You can rule or have political power through the appointment to political roles, so through the capacity to decide who is who in hierarchical structures, and it is one of the oldest forms, by the way, of political power in history. Allocation of capital and use of coercive force. Now I return to the previous slide and I go to the head of that table, so to those forms of general legal action. Why I put those forms of legal action in that table or in the classification of forms of political power and why I call it general. Essentially, here I have a special slide to in introduce that concept. It is a recurrent pattern in human societies uh, that whenever we have a political system with any degree of stability, that political system is sort of married and fused with a legal system. So any political system like really worth its name is a system paired with a hierarchy of legal rules. Uh, so, law and politics are almost indissociable from each other. And whatever is the substance of power, it somehow always unfolds through law. Here I allowed myself to give a quote from Louis Brandeis that if we desire respect for the law, we must first make the law respectable. And I return to that classification of forms of legal action. Why do I call that legal action general? Because political power manifests its, uh, itself in the capacity to make general rules for everybody. Uh, it is a difference from the strictly speaking business power or economic power. Because in business, your power usually manifests itself by the capacity to negotiate, sign and enforce contracts. So specific legal action, but in the for, in the case of political power, you can manifest you can manifest your political power more by establishing and enforcing general legal rules, like for entire cohorts of population. And in a typical legal process, you have four steps and so four forms of billing, of general legal action. You have billing. So the capacity to propose new legal rules. In most constitutional systems, there are certain limitations or rules as for who can propose a legal bill, so a proposal of, of new legal rules. Uh, it can be, for example, the president, a group of members of the parliament, a political party. But it is not like I can walk into my Polish parliament, just as me, as Krzysztof Waśniewski, and I can put on someone's desk a legal bill and tell them, just you guys go and vote it. No, I, I cannot do. The power of billing, so the capacity to propose new legal rules, is usually limited in the constitutional system to a certain number of specific actors, specific uh, social entities. The next step is enactment. So the transformation of a proposal, an idea for legal rules, into an actually binding legal act. The fourth one is enforcement. So the capacity to enforce the law which has been already enacted, which has already been voted as law in force. And finally, there is that subtle power called veto. 
So the capacity to oppose other political entities in their billing, enactment or enforcement. It is a special power, yet it is important. For example, if someone proposes a legal bill at the parliament, if they do it lawfully, if the bill finds its path through the parliamentary machine, and if I have the power to say, whoa, guys, stop, huh? stop and let's think. Let's, for example, debate that legal bill in a special committee and let's do it for one year. If I have that power, it is my power of veto and it is an important power because I can, I can substantially slow down, for example, the way um, that new legal rules are being built and enacted. So, this is the general classification. Uh, I will return many times in my videos and in my teaching to the table, so you can just make a screenshot of that, because it is like one of the, of the pegs of the, of, of the hallmarks uh, of my teaching in as, as far as we talk about political systems. And now I will give you three cases, like three examples of how that classification applies in real life. Case number one, I return to the constitution of Uganda, which, if I remember well, I referred to in my first video in political systems. Here is a short extract, chapter six, the legislature, establishment, composition and functions of parliament. Legislature, essentially means enactment of laws. So legislature is that function of the government, is that function of the political system, uh, which uh, makes legal rules happen or, or which puts legal rules into force. Here is that extract from the Constitution of Uganda. Parliament of Uganda. There shall be a parliament of Uganda and the compositions and uh, the composition and functions of parliament shall be as prescribed by this constitution. Now it is an important thing which you can find here in the, my commentary to that to that short extract that if you look across the world across many countries right now you have very few countries where new laws are being enacted by like a single entity, for example, by a president or a dictator. There are some dictatorships, yet there is, it is like a general rule that for the making of legal rules, for the enactment and for the proper billing of legal rules, Usually there is a collective body composed of elected officials. There is some form of parliament. Most countries have parliaments. Of course, the real power uh, that those parliaments have as compared to other political agents, that power can vary from country to country. Yet right now it is like an established pattern that law is being made in those collective elected bodies called parliaments. It is sort of an key in political systems. Case number two. Uh, here I took the first, uh, the first part of the, ch of the chapter in the Constitution of India, which I have already referred to in my past videos. Here it is about the President of India. Here you have this passage, which I will magnify just in order to read it aloud. Executive power of the Union. The executive power of the Union shall be vested in the President and shall be exercised by him, either directly or through officers subordinate to him, in accordance with this Constitution. Now, how does this fit, how does this fact that the President of India has supreme power in enforcing laws, how does it fit in that table that I presented in the beginning? If I go to the table, it means that the President of India 
is here in uh, enforcement of law so within the freedom given to the president by law the president can create executive rules so uh, can decide about the specific manner that legal rules will be enforced can appoint to political rules can allocate capital and maybe can use coercive force that's the meaning of executive power now in the same passage from the indian constitution there is another one another fragment which i uh, surrounded uh, or, or 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 which i circled uh, in uh, in red and here is written the president shall be elected by the members of an electoral college consisting of the elected members of both houses of parliament and the elected members of the legislative assemblies of the states. It means that the parliament and state assemblies appoint the president. So this is the power of appointment in enforcement of the constitution. So in that table that we have here, appointment of the president of India is here. Um, the substance of power is appointment to political roles and the form of legal action that this substance of power is being consumed with is enforcement of law. So the president of India or his or her appointment is here in the table. Okay, I go back to India. So in this short passage from the Indian constitution, you have two forms of political power. One, the, the general power of the president to enforce the law, to be the executive officer of the union, and the power of the parliament and state assemblies to appoint the president. So, a word to the wise, if you read any given constitution, you should be ready to find many forms of political power like back to back in the same article inside the constitution. And finally, the third case, that of Belarus and the immovable president uh, Lukashenko. Here I give you an extract from the constitution of Belarus. I put it here in the center of the screen. So, the president of the Republic of Belarus shall dismiss the chairperson and judges of the Constitutional, Supreme and Economic Courts, the chairperson of the Central Commission of the Republic of Belarus on Elections and National Referenda, the Procurator General, the chairperson and members of the Board of the National Bank to the order and instances determined by the law and to the notification of the Council of the Republic. So, in other words, there are those top dogs in the political system. So, th those chairpersons of the Constitutional, Supreme and Economic Courts, the Central Commission of the Republic of Belarus on elections and national referenda and, and so on. So, there are those top actors, like really tough big players, and the President of Belarus can just remove them from their respective offices that they hold. It is a huge power. And in the same manner, the President of the Republic shall appoint and dismiss the chairperson of the State Supervisory Committee. Here, by the way, a, a, um, like a side remark, a digression. This, for, uh, this specific turn of, uh, of phrase, the President of the Republic of Belarus shall. Please notice, it is written shall. It is not written can. It is written shall. It means that the president of, of the Republic is supposed to do those things. It is not just a possibility. That, term, uh, that specific word shall means that it is like bound to happen. Now imagine that situation. Uh, there is a person who has been, for example, a chairperson of the Constitutional Court for five years or ten years. And the President of the Republic can just remove them from the office. 
imagine how big a uh, soft power like from person to person president lukashenko has on over that specific political agent huh? and here i come to generalization uh, so as I observe uh, the political system of Belarus, like over many years, because we are essentially next door to each other, we are neighbors, Poland and, and Belarus, President Lukashenko grounds his um, cast iron, apparently lifelong presidency, grounds his huge power he really has, by using extensively, by using like to, to the bone, that specific substance of power which I label appointment to political roles. The idea is that if I am a political leader, if I can appoint people who further have the power to appoint like subordinate people, if I, and if I make all those people willing to keep me in power, to keep me in charge, then I have huge leverage over the whole structure. So if I make the careers, the political, administrative and even business careers of those people is dependent on my willingness to appoint or reappoint them, then I have like real power. And for example, you can, uh, you can notice that President Lukashenko uh, gets elected as president over and over and over again in each consecutive presidential election. And he gets elected because all other counter candidates who could possibly emerge get arrested or get fined with heavy financial fines just be before the elections. What does it mean? It means that there is a whole apparatus made of people, prosecutors, police officers, judges, who rely so heavily on appointments made by the president Lukashenko that they just are eager to serve him and to put in jail and to put under pr prosecution those people who could possibly oppose president Lukashenko in the, in the next coming election. So this is an example of very extensive use of that specific substance of power appointment to political roles. Okay. That would be it in this video. Uh, so I gave you like a more formal, more structured presentation of what are forms of political power. And well, uh, as usually, I wish you to have fun with science and to have fun with your life. Bye.